I'm still working on the lighting today, guys, so once again, if you have any feedback, I'd really appreciate it. I actually really need new lights for this room and soundproofing and a microphone, but, you know. Also, if I sound particularly off today, that's because my allergies have hit me like a freaking brick. I'm doing a pretty good job of hiding it, I think, but just in case you guys notice, that is what's going on. That said, let's talk about Restaurant Wars. I love this episode. I loved everything about this episode. And yes, that does have the connotations that you think it does. But we'll get to that in a second. I am going to try something different this time. Some of you guys have been saying you don't like how much of my reviews focus on the summary of the episode. Even though I do try to provide commentary along with the summary, some of you guys see that as just rehashing the episode and calling it a review. Which is fine. That's perfectly valid criticism. So I'm going to try something a little different today. And afterwards, I want you guys to go to the straw poll link in the description and tell me which review style you like better. That said, let's get right into this. For those of you who haven't seen the episode Restaurant Wars, it focuses on Steven accidentally starting a conversation conflict between Mr. Fryman and Kofi Pizza. Apparently many years ago there was a treaty signed between the two of them that is absolutely as absurd as it sounds, where the two agreed that neither of them would infringe on the other's business, try to steal customers, and by selling mozzarella sticks to Stephen, P.D. Fryman accidentally violated that treaty and the war has started again and now they're doing practically nothing but trying to steal each other's business. So it's up to Stephen and the children of the two restaurateurs to try to end the conflict and restore order to the boardwalk. There are a few zany plans that they try. First of all, because they are sitting right next to each other, Stephen has the idea for Ronaldo and Kiki to pretend like they're in a romantic relationship, despite Ronaldo's insistence that he has a girlfriend. And it almost works until Ronaldo's girlfriend catches him, and now Ronaldo has to play fix it with his own relationship. It isn't until Steven learns how it was that the two restaurants formed a piece in the first place, having to unite against a third restaurant that was putting both out of business, that he gets the idea that will fix the situation once and for all. He starts his own business, which serves better french fries and better pizza than either of them, because as we've established, this kid is a multi-talented boss. And the two restaurateurs unite to literally beg him to close his restaurant. A new treaty is signed and order is restored. And there were several standout scenes throughout the course of this episode. I've mentioned the issues with pacing that the show has had recently, and this episode solved those issues by giving us a dramatic time cut right after the renewed restaurant war began, where we get to see some of the admittedly over-dramatized aftermath of the first conflict. They don't have to cram in all that build-up because we can assume what the build-up actually was. It was very clever and fit with the tone of the episode, which was over-dramatizing this relatively mundane thing. Two businesses competing with each other. I also, and this is really going to shock all of you, loved Ronaldo in this episode. Holy crap. Now, he wasn't the only standout character. Kiki and Jetty Pizza were fantastic in this episode as well. PD was really good in this episode. But Ronaldo stood out. He was fantastic in this episode. His characteristic melodrama actually fit the situation this time. This is how you write this character to be useful to the plot, to work in the plot and not be out of character. Fantastic work, writers. And because they've been writing him better lately and he was written better in this episode, when his girlfriend showed up and was so hurt and he was so hurt and now he's trying so hard to work things out with her, I felt bad for him. I want him to succeed. Also, let's talk about his girlfriend for a minute. We've actually seen her a couple times before. First back in Lion 2 the movie, working at the ticket booth at the theater, and again in Beach City Drift as one of the spectators. They didn't have to do that. They could have invented a new girl for him to be dating. But what a fantastic continuity nod. Let's also talk about Stevens, the restaurant that Steven opens. It's literally just his house with two tables, which is just enough for the two families to come and sit down so he can impress the two restaurateurs and get them to see sense. And he's got Pearl set up as a waiter, which is absolutely adorable. He's got himself and Amethyst set up as chefs, which was fantastic. Because of course they're going to know how to cook. All they ever do is eat stuff that doesn't quite make sense to regular people. Of course they're going to know how to make these out-of-the-box recipes. But what I want to talk about the most here is Garnet, who was literally just standing there in a suit doing nothing but looking fabulous. Didn't say a word, at least not as far as I can remember, just looked there and added to the ambiance of the place. Which makes me wonder briefly, was Estelle on tour or something when they were producing these last few episodes? Because Garnet has not spoken in an episode for quite a while now. I also really loved the tone of this episode. There were anime nods all throughout this thing. You guys have very nicely pointed out to me that while I still do think they were parroting the Fast and Furious movies a little bit in Beach City Drift, they were primarily parodying 
initial D, a 90s anime that I only actually watched a couple of times. And here we get another anime nod. Not so much a nod to a specific anime series, but a lot of the dramatic moments here were framed like dramatic moments in an anime. And I'll be showing those uh, here for reference. This was overall a fantastic fun episode that I really enjoyed watching. I'd love to see more episodes like this. It took elements of the show that I haven't really been a fan of in the past that I thought could have been done better in the past, ran with them and improved upon them so much. The pacing here was so much better. Ronaldo's character here was so much better. I actually think after this episode, I can say I like Ronaldo as a character, which is so weird for me to say. It's like, surreal. And considering that Matt Brandt tweeted recently that, uh, if I read it right, next week is going to be the start of <laughs> going down, it's good to see some lighthearted stuff leading into that. It's the kind of thing that a show like this needs, a calm before the storm. All of that said, guys, what did you think of this episode? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. And remember, don't forget to vote in that straw poll down below in the description. Let me know which review style you prefer. Either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later. Now you can give them pizza whenever they want. Pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, pizza at the first time. When pizza's on a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime!